Welcome to Living Life. I hope uh, you all are staying safe and healthy uh, through this pandemic. And uh, today's passage is uh, from Jeremiah 51. Uh, we're continuing our uh, devotion on the book of Jeremiah. And uh, in today's passage, God talks about uh, his destruction uh, toward uh, Babylon. And I think there are uh, three uh, different type of people, and actually friends. And first uh, type is the friends that you don't want to be friend with. And second type is the friends that, uh, that are good to be friend with, but uh, they're not that necessary in your life. And the last type is those friends that you really want to be friend with and you have to. And which uh, category does God fall into in your life? And I, after this uh, devotion, that I hope uh, we all come to a conclusion. Let's look at the passage together. Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 1 through 14. This is what the Lord says. See, I will stir up the spirit of a destroyer against Babylon and the people of Leb Kamai. I will send foreigners to Babylon to winnow her and to devastate her land. They will oppose her on every side in the day of her disaster. Let not the archer string his bow, nor let him put on his armor. Do not spare her young men, completely destroy her army. They will fall down slain in Babylon fatally wounded in her streets. For Israel and Judah have not been forsaken by their God, the Lord Almighty, though their land is full of guilt before the Holy One of Israel. Flee from Babylon, run for your lives. Do not be destroyed because of her sins. It is time for the Lord's vengeance. He will repay her what she deserves. Babylon was a gold cup in the Lord's hand. She made the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore they have now gone mad. Babylon will suddenly fall and be broken. Wail over her. Get balm for her pain. Perhaps she can be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she cannot be healed. Let us leave her and each go to our own land, for her judgment reaches to the skies. It rises as high as the heavens. The Lord has vindicated us. Come, let us tell in Zion what the Lord our God has done. Sharpen the arrows, take up the shields. The Lord has stirred up the kings of the Medes, because his purpose is to destroy Babylon. The Lord will take vengeance, vengeance for his temple. Lift up a banner against the walls of Babylon. Reinforce the guard, station the watchmen, prepare an ambush. The Lord will carry out his purpose, his decree against the people of Babylon. You who live by many waters and are rich in treasures, your end has come, the time for you to be destroyed. The Lord Almighty has sworn by himself, I will surely fill you with troops as with a swarm of locusts, and they will shout in triumph over you. And today we're looking at Jeremiah 51. Uh, Jeremiah 51 is actually the continuation from Jeremiah 50, uh, talking about the destruction of Babylon. And uh, when this uh, message that God is speaking through Jeremiah took place was actually when the Babylon was so strong and so mighty, and they are the ones who are trying to attack and destroy uh, the land of Judea and the city of Jerusalem. Uh, they were uh, just staying there and uh, threatening this land and trying to destroy all the land. And uh, the people in Jerusalem were scared and they were uh, just waiting for to be destroyed. And God is telling uh, Jeremiah that it's not about the destruction of uh, Jerusalem, but the destruction of Babylon, the kingdom that is uh, cur currently attacking Israel. Uh, God is telling Jeremiah that it's not about Jerusalem, it's about Babylon. The Babylon will be destroyed, which was a news that nobody could believe. This was a fascinating news that everyone would have been surprised to hear. But God is telling Jeremiah that this is the uh, coming uh, truth that God, is, God will do in the life of Israelites. 
this is coming. And he is uh, promising them not only just uh, attack Babylon, but he's saying he will completely destroy Babylon. In verse 3, it says, Do not spare her, young man. Completely destroy her army. God is uh, telling Jeremiah, saying that God will destroy completely. And the reason was because uh, Babylon is standing, opposing against God. And for those who will stand against God, will come to an end. And uh, to come to an end with a complete destruction. We see that uh, in verse 11, God is saying that the Lord will take vengeance, vengeance for his temple. And we see the reason why, why God is uh, saying that this land of uh, Babylon will be completely destroyed. Because they, are, uh, they were standing against God. They were destroying the temple of God. They were stealing from the temple of God and they mocked the people of Israel. And now it's their turn. Their turn came to be destroyed by God. And in verse 1 also, it says, The Babylon and the people of Lab-Kamai uh, will see the destruction. And uh, the Lab-Kamai actually means uh, Babylon. But the literal translation of Lab-Kamai is actually the heart of my adversaries. Uh, so they were the people who are standing opposing God. Uh, they, the Babylonians are those who have opposed God. And as a result of that, uh, they will see the destruction, the complete destruction that nobody could ever uh, have imagined of coming to uh, the land of Babylon. But it's coming. The Lord is promising Jeremiah and the people of Judea that this is coming because they were sent against God. And the thing we, that, we, that we need to know in verse 7, that is saying that Babylon was gold cup in the Lord's hand, which means that Babylon was no more uh, than a tool, the instrument that was used by God uh, to punish other uh, countries that are around them. So they were mere uh, instrument that God has used. And now the time came, and now the, the will of God for, to use Babylon has ended and that there was no more use for Babylon. And God has to punish them because they deserve the punishment that God has promised uh, to Babylon because they were standing opposing God. They were the ones who have opposed God. And we have to remember, uh, God is someone, uh, he's not just a, a friend that uh, it's good to be with and who's not really necessary in our lives, but if God is a friend that uh, we definitely need and we have to have. And if there's one person that you don't want to become enemy with, it's God. Because if you oppose against God, that means you'll face the complete destruction. There's no hope and there's no help and there's no, nothing we can do if God is standing against us. No one actually can uh, help us and save uh, from that destruction that God is bringing to his enemies. And this is a very significant in our lives. I'm not just saying that we have to fear God to the point that what will happen if God just abandon us, if God will destroy us. But that's not the point. But we have to remember that God is uh, that significant in our lives. God has power to destroy and God has power to save. And like he did through his son, Jesus Christ. And he brought this new salvation in our lives. And he has the power to save us with his love, with his grace, and his, with his mercy. That he is willing to be with us. And he is stay, willing to stand with us. And now as I want to ask you uh, which side you want to stand. Which category you want to put God into in your lives. And uh, that decision can make huge difference in your life. And if you decide to... Uh, be friend with God. And if you stay, decide to stay friend with God forever in your life, I'm glad that, uh, that you made the best decision in your life. And that decision will bring peace and that decision will bring joy and uh, bring happiness in your life, I guarantee. Uh, for Christians, uh, for believers, it's not an option for us uh, to decide whether we are going to be on God's side or not. It's not an option for us. 
it's, uh, it's about life and death. It's about uh, salvation and destruction. Uh, it's something that we have to come to a conclusion in our lives. And I hope that the uh, conclusion will be made today. That decision will change our lives, all of our lives. Because uh, our life is an emergency situation. Uh, when the emergency bell, or the fire bell rings, that we have to run. And where are you going to run to? And the answer is simple, that we have to run to God. As believers, when there's an emergency, we run to God. And that's where we find our hope. That's where we find our help. And that's where our salvation is coming uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And God is uh, asking us to come to Him, run to Him. And I pray this day uh, that today you will make that decision to run to God and be saved. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and we love you so much for what you are doing in our lives. And we pray and ask you to be our God and to be our friend and to stand on our side that we may live according to your plan and to your will and that we'll please you forever in our lives. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.